What's up everyone? Welcome to 4K Kings. I'm Matt and today Russ and I are going to be going through our questionable pickups. Now what is a questionable pickup you might be asking? It's maybe questionable because people will then question your taste in movies once they know that you've purchased this film. You might not expect this to own or maybe they're known for being terrible. Who knows? After I go through my selection here and Russ goes through his selection, you might even question why you subscribe to this channel. I guess we'll just see what happens here. Maybe we'll see a huge subscriber drop off. Maybe we'll see a surge with our courage, our honesty. Maybe all that will be enough to endear us to you all just a little bit more. Or maybe not. Before we dig in, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and click that bell to get notified for future videos. And let's jump right in. We've been seeing a lot of Tom Cruise lately with Top Gun Maverick hitting the theaters as well as his new Mission Impossible trailer. But I'm gonna take you back to the 90s with a film that is near and dear to my heart, Ron Howard's Far and Away. Far and Away is a movie that came out a little bit in the early 90s when Tom was still with Nicole Kidman. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman are essentially immigrants from Ireland coming to America to try to make a better life for themselves. And it's one of those movies where obviously the two are going to gradually fall in love over time even though they are very opposite each other, but Tom Cruise gives a really great performance here. It's kind of fun, it's goofy, it's a little quirky too, and it can be serious when it needs to be. Now, I saw this in history class because a huge portion of the ending revolves around the Louisiana Purchase. I got an A in that class, and this movie has an A in my heart. First, I'm going to begin with the Screen Factory release, The Crush, starring Alicia Silverstone from 1993. Why Scream Factory released this one, I have no idea. To me, it fits in more with Shout Select, same with Poison Ivy. I have a soft spot for this movie. I grew up on it. I remember seeing it at 11 years old. And uh, I also have a history with one of the cast members, Jennifer Rubin, who uh, my wife, who's recording, just grimaced. Uh, Jennifer Rubin seemed to have taken a liking to me when I met her. Who knows what could have been if I went through with it. Don't give me that look, honey. Next up is a movie I've been roasted for countless times, mainly by Russ and mainly on our channel. One of my favorite Harrison Ford films regarding Henry. One of my favorite Harrison Ford characters above Indiana Jones and Han Solo, uh, maybe even Richard Kimball. I didn't kill my wife! This is another just sort of 90s cheesy drama starring Harrison Ford, but it's compelling and it works and I've always really enjoyed it. It's one of those movies that I've seen hundreds of times just because it's on television about Harrison Ford who's basically a dick. He gets shot and has to go through rehabilitation after being in a coma as a result. And after this accident, he sort of goes back into his life, but he's sort of trying to figure out who he is and what he was. And it's sort of this moment where he's learning what a piece of shit he was and how he maybe doesn't want to be that way. He wants to be more, more family oriented, gets more in touch with his daughter and kind of wants to live a better life. So it's kind of a sweet movie. It's got a good heart. Regarding Henry, I can't recommend you enough. For my second selection, I'll be discussing 47 Meters Down Uncaged, a modern shark flick which is utterly ridiculous from beginning to end. I saw this in the theater with my stepson and stepdaughter, and it was an empty theater, and this movie is so terrible. We were basically mystery science theatering it up the whole time, just laughs, so viewing this as a comedy is the best way to go, and it's actually enjoyable. Next up is the inspiration for this segment altogether. We talked about this movie briefly a little while ago and Russ sort of laughed that I was even interested in picking this up. We should do a segment on our questionable pickups and you should include Soap Dish. I can't say enough about Soap Dish as being just a like zany comedy. It's a movie about a soap opera, but the plot itself is a soap opera. It's just so easy to watch and there's so many easy laughs. Sally Field, if you're even close to a fan, uh, you'll really enjoy her performance in this. Kevin Klein, one of his finest acting roles. Elizabeth Shue, Robert Downey Jr., Whoopi Goldberg, Terry Garr, Kathy Moriarty. I mean, half of these people we've referenced in other films on this channel alone. So they're all coming together now to form this amazing 90s comedy. Give it a chance if you'd like. Otherwise, roast me down below on Soap Dish. Next up, I'll be discussing the Anne Hathaway classic, Bride Wars. Now beyond my crush on Anne Hathaway, which is well documented throughout 4K King's history, I like the fact that this is a simple PG rated film. To me, they just don't make movies like this anymore. I'm not saying this is a masterpiece, but I miss films that had the balls to be simple. 
I don't even know what I'm saying here. Whatever, I guess it's just all Anne Hathaway. This one could be the most questionable of the list, and that is the Ridley Scott masterpiece, Prometheus. When the trailers and all the information started to flow for this movie, it seemed so awesome, like we were going to get a really great alien prequel. Is it a sequel? We don't know. All this lore that was going to be explored, and the visuals looked incredible, so when it was time to see this movie, I feel like myself and probably a lot of people were really pumped. It was pretty much a letdown. I mean, the writing was terrible. There were so many things that were just so unforgivable, little plot holes or things that you just couldn't overlook in the grand scheme, but despite its flaws, it is entertaining. I don't know, I just feel like this was a colossal misfire, but still something that I enjoy. I never picked this up on 4K, maybe one day I will, but for now I'm happy with my Blu-ray of Prometheus. 1995's Clueless. Yes, this is the second Alicia Silverstone entry into the questionable pickup segment on my part, but you cannot go wrong with this film. It is utter perfection from beginning to end, from the pacing to the cast. Who knew Paul Rudd would go on to be Paul Rudd? If you ask me, this is the defining film of the 1990s. It was right in the middle, so it harkens to the earlier part of the decade while also influencing the second half. If you, for some reason, want to challenge me on the merits of Clueless, I will be glad to debate you on this being a masterpiece. Next up is another staple of my house in the 90s. It also stars Sally Field in one of her greatest roles, as well as Julia Roberts in one of her greatest roles, and that is Steel Magnolias. If you haven't heard of this movie, maybe ask your mom, ask an aunt, an older sister, someone that was around back then. It's such a great movie about family and community and love, and it's very relatable on all types of levels, no matter who you are, where you're coming from. It's got really a mix of everything. It makes you laugh, it makes you want to cry, it makes you feel for all the people involved and all the emotional roller coasters that they're going through, all the trials and tribulations of just what it is to be in a family and being with friends and in friendships. If you haven't seen it and you maybe want to shed a tear, come check out Steel Magnolias. Enchanted, starring Amy Adams. I love this movie to death. There is a running joke at my job about how I know the words to all of the musical numbers. It is genuinely heartwarming, sweet, endlessly entertaining, and in my opinion, a modern classic. If you're like me and this doesn't look like your cup of tea, give it a shot. You may be surprised. Getting towards the end here, this is another one that kind of surprised me that I even own or that I even liked in the first place, and I'm not even sure what compelled me to watch this movie, but I did, and I enjoy the hell out of it, and I can't recommend this movie enough, and that is Bad Teacher, starring Cameron Diaz. Damn if she did not shock the hell out of me in this movie, and she is so damn funny. This movie, from start to finish... It comes out of the gate with very raunchy, funny humor that I wasn't expecting. I guess I didn't realize this movie was rated R. Maybe I thought it was PG-13. But this movie goes pretty hard, and the laughs are pretty genuine. I mean, I think it's intelligent. It's got some smarts behind it. Again, Cameron Diaz, amazing in it, including Justin Timberlake, who is in there just to be basically the butt of a joke the whole time, and it works. Again, this movie is a genuine comedy that I would recommend to anybody that just wants to have a few good laughs. Give Bad Teacher a try, or if you think this is too questionable, let me know below. Next, I'll be discussing the beloved 80s film, Mannequin, starring the god Andrew McCarthy. I have so many memories about this film, one of my earliest movie experiences. My mother rented it for me from a blockbuster and we ended up keeping the video. This film also unintentionally introduced me to Big Trouble in Little China due to the Kim Cattrall connection. My mother bought me Big Trouble in Little China based on my adoration for this Andrew McCarthy, James Spader, Estelle Getty, uh, the list goes on and on, classic mannequin. Last up is probably the most questionable one of the list and probably the one I'm going to need to sell the hardest, which, I mean, I'll do my best. And that is the Wachowskis' Cloud Atlas. 
This movie was pretty much, I want to say, universally panned upon release, and I'm not again sure why I decided to check this out. I don't know, man. This movie is a tough sell. It's nearly three hours long. It's compiled of six individual stories that are spanning six completely different time frames from all the way in the distant past to all the way in the distant future, and all of these actors are playing different characters in each one of these six segments. So you might have Tom Hanks in one playing one character and he's also in the other five playing someone completely different. And the whole idea is that these people are somehow related over time and what one's actions early on in life can maybe resonate through future. But the reason why I feel like this movie works and maybe the only way it could have worked is the pacing of it is so good. Basically jumping from each of these stories very rapid fire. You're getting a little bit of this story, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and you're just kind of bouncing all over. And it really feels kinetic. None of it kind of gets past you. It's not really confusing. It's just very epic in scope. And there's a lot of things to obviously consider and to remember. It was a colossal bomb, but I feel like it's got a place in my heart. If it's a movie that you want to check out, I suggest you do so. Otherwise, tell me why it's questionable down below. Best poltergeist movie, period. As always, thank you for joining Russ and I. We really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you like this video, let us know and click that like button. It really helps us understand what it is that you even want from this channel. What do you want from us? We're doing our best here. I don't think any of these are questionable.